In today's video, I'll be providing an overview of the treatment of shock. This will be very brief because there will be future videos dedicated to resuscitation fluids and pressors, as well as individual videos specifically for hypovolemic, septic, and cardiogenic shock. The sole learning objective is to be able to compare general treatment principles between different shock types. The single most important principle in treatment is this. Although treatment should be aimed at the underlying etiology of shock, the most critical aspect of treatment is the prompt restoration of normal hemodynamics. Therefore, a rundown of priorities should look like this. First, pulse, ventilation, and oxygenation. Second, fluids, unless it's clear that the patient is experiencing cardiogenic shock. Third, so-called pressors, which is an umbrella term that includes both vasopressors as well as inotropes. And last, everything else. This doesn't mean that timely antibiotics aren't important in septic shock or that patients with a bleeding peptic ulcer should not get their PPI, but it does mean that those interventions should not be started until an attempt has been made at stabilizing the patient and improving the hemodynamics with fluids and or pressors. The exception to this list of priorities is obstructive shock, in which case the obstruction must be dealt with first before fluids or pressors will have much effect. From a hemodynamic perspective, there are three main categories of treatment for shock. IV fluids, which act by increasing CVP, and a little more downstream, increasing left ventricular end diastolic volume. Vasopressors, which act by increasing SVR. And inotropes, which act by increasing contractility and thus increasing cardiac output. In hypovolemic shock, the primary derangement is low CVP, so therefore IV fluids are the cornerstone of therapy. If the patient is profoundly hypotensive, vasopressors are sometimes used temporarily, but only while definitive access is obtained and fluids pushed in as quickly as possible. If a patient in hypovolemic shock is requiring vasopressors to maintain enough perfusion pressure to stay conscious, they are in critical need of more fluid. Since these patients are already extremely hyperdynamic, there is no benefit to inotropes, which will only risk worsening tachycardia to the point that diastolic filling time is too short for the LV to fill, even with a meager amount of fluid available. In distributive shock, the primary derangement is low SVR, so vasopressors are almost always necessary. Since most of these patients are also hypovolemic, or at the very least, have their fluid maldistributed to the periphery rather than in the central circulation, IV fluids are used in every case. And because of the sepsis-induced cardiomyopathy, some patients with sepsis may also benefit from inotropes, but identifying those patients can be a little tricky. That will be discussed more in the upcoming video on pressors. In cardiogenic shock, the primary problem is low cardiac output, thus inotropes are the main therapy. Both fluids and vasopressors are not only unnecessary, but contraindicated. Finally, in obstructive shock, it's impossible to generalize about the appropriateness of fluids, vasopressors, and inotropes. And if there is a response to any of those, it's likely only temporary and definitive relief of the obstruction is still critical. For a tension pneumothorax, this is either a chest tube or, if more emergent, needle thoracostomy which consists of a needle placed into the pleural space via the second intercostal space in the midclavicular line. For cardiac tamponade, this is a pericardiocentesis, a procedure in which a needle is placed into the pericardial space, most commonly via a subxiphoid approach. And in massive PE, depending on the circumstances, this may or may not involve systemic thrombolysis versus embolectomy. That's all there is to the general treatment principles of shock. As already mentioned, upcoming videos in this series will cover more details about specific therapies and specific types of shock.